All right, well, good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for coming to this um, Human Rights Watch and BHRC event. Um, BHRC are delighted this evening to um, be with Human Rights Watch for the launch of their report on Bahrain, uh, criminalising dissent and entrenching impunity. BHRC has done a lot of work in Bahrain over the last 10 years or so and remains very interested in the current position. Um, but this is an event uh, about a very specific report, and so I'm going to hand over directly to the people involved with that report. I have on my right um, Joe Stork, who is the Deputy Middle East Director of Human Rights Watch. Uh, on my left, I have Nazina Sahid, who is a journalist for France 24, who is, uh, has just come back from, or has just come to the UK from Bahrain. And on the far side of the table, I have Josh uh, Colangelo. Colangelo, if I pronounce it right. Josh works. Josh Colangelo, right who is the author of the report and an attorney at a New York firm. Um, so without further ado, over to Joe. Thank you. Thank you very much again. My thanks, our thanks to all of you for coming out this evening. Uh, and uh, thank you for hosting this. Um, I joined Human Rights Watch in 1996, and my first assignment was to work on Bahrain. And that was my first visit to Bahrain, it was in 1996. And I've been uh, covering been involved in our coverage, Human Rights Watch's coverage of Bahrain uh, since that time. Uh, that, at that time, uh, that was a very bad time. Uh, it was the, uh, uh, we were still in the midst of 30, 35 years of, you know, a, a rather totalitarian uh, monarchy type uh, political system. Torture was rife, uh, uh, opposition People were uh, egg forcibly exiled from the country. There were thousands of political prisoners. It was a really terrible time. And then King, uh, he brought a, a, some very important reforms with him, or he instituted, helped institute important reforms, which we'd like to think, uh, you know, partly reflected some of the uh, exposés and that we had done and recommendations that we had made. He, he abolished the state security courts and revoked the state security law. He freed the political prisoners. He welcomed uh, uh, the exiles back. Uh, most of them did, in fact, return. Um, there was a period then of five, six, seven years of uh, of optimism, I'd say, uh, on the part of, uh, of, of many Bahrainis. Um, and it was really in, in around the sort of 2008, 2009, the political scene started to sour, uh, sense that, that the promises of the king to, to actually move towards some sort of constitutional monarchy where with the emphasis on constitution rather than monarch, uh, that that wasn't uh, coming to, to, to pass. Pro street protests started again, people started being arrested again. Uh, we started getting lots of uh, very credible reports of abuse and torture and detention and and so forth. Um, and it was at that point that actually Josh Colangelo um, uh, started working with us uh, on in our Bahrain work as a consultant. He had been he'd become acquainted with Bahrain in uh, when he worked as a as a pro bono lawyer for Bahrainis who were incarcerated in Guantanamo. Okay. And after those situations were resolved and those Bahrainis were able to go back home, um, uh, Josh uh, sort of volunteered to do some work on the human rights situations you know, in Bahrain itself. And he and I collaborated on a report that came out in 2010 called uh, Torture Redux, the revival of torture during interrogations in Bahrain. And then, then of course, there were the events of 2011. Um, and uh, the very harsh crackdown, the very much a return in almost every way to the, you know, the Bahrain that I first knew in 1996. Um, the uh, international pressures uh, helped uh, persuade King Hamad to appoint the, uh, the BICI, the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry, five independent international jurists who spent five months in the country, produced a 500-page report that was released in November 2011 that documented many of the crimes, uh, the killings on the streets, the torture, deaths and detention, and so forth. Um, and in some ways, you know, since that time, 
we have used the recommendations, the conclusions and recommendations of that report to kind of guide what, um, what some of the work we do on Bahrain, in addition to sort of monitoring ongoing developments, um, also sort of looking at how Bahrain has or has not actually implemented the Bikki recommendations, which the King had in a very public way accepted, said we accept the findings uh, and conclusions and we will implement the recommendations. So this report is uh, that we're releasing today, which, uh, which Josh will talk about, um, Josh actually wrote a report that came out two years ago called No Justice, which so that's a, you know, a brilliant summary of what the report's about. Uh, uh, and this, this takes another look at, the, uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at, at what's happened in the courts since then with the appeals that were, uh, were made to appeals of the military court convictions, the, uh, the prosecutions for speech crimes that have happened since the Bickey report, and the uh, the, uh, the failure, overall failure, of the government to implement the recommendations on accountability and holding re responsible, uh, holding accountable people responsible for, security officials responsible for um, grave crimes. Um, so with no more ado, uh, let me turn it over to Josh to say a few words about the report, uh, which is available here if you haven't already picked it up. It's on the table outside. It's online. It's on the, in the back. You know, send it far and wide uh, to your friends and family. Um, and okay, Josh, take it away. 